What is your guys' opinion? Win. If you went one in Beard. thirty, traitor. It wasn't about him leaving. It was about how he left. He's a traitor. He essentially, tried to, to, I mean, destroy the program. This is the biggest game of the year. Yeah. You could lose every other game. This is oh, yeah. the game you have to win. Sure. If you went one in thirty, but you beat Beard, you might be oh, happy. It was a great season. <laughs> what do you think you're gonna do when you first see him come out on the floor? Yeah, I don't think it'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be good. What percentage of, of the people in there do you think are going to cheer for Chris Beard tomorrow? Less than 1%. Yeah. Wow. I think that's high. Like, I think it will be zero. Your reaction when, when Chris Beard is going to come out tomorrow on the court is going to be what? Um, I'm probably pretty upset. Are you going to yell bad things at him? There is a possibility. I got to say there is. Your mom and dad are not going to be happy. My mom and dad are not going to be happy. I definitely don't feel bad for him. Give me one word to describe Chris Beard. Traitor. Traitor. Right? Traitor. Ugly. Oh, oh, oh ugly, oh dang. God. That's brutal. The hatred that we have for Texas here is, yeah. is why? an undescribable. Why? Oh, because Texas is this, like, high academic snooty Man, school. Those guys in Lubbock are fired up. This is the Field of 68 After Dark. My name is Rob Doster. I have Terrence Oglesby and Steve Prohm with me. You can find us, Sirius XM Channel 84. That is the ESPNU station. We're streaming on YouTube, so make sure you jump in the chat. Ask us some questions. We'll be answering those during commercial breaks, uh, and we will be uh, we will be interacting with you guys there. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure that you listen to the Goodman and Humble podcast. That's what we clipped what you just heard from Jeff Goodman right now is in Lubbock going through what they call Raiderville. He's throwing out candy bars with Mark Adams. He's uh, waiting for the bus. He's asking all the students why they are so mad at Chris Beard. And it seems like, Steve, there's a little bit of hatred for uh, for their former coach down there in Lubbock and I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm not entirely sure why they're mad because he's the reason why they actually care about that program. Is it is it just as simple as that? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's just you know because he left. Um, I think Tubby Smith, first of all, did a, did a terrific job. I think you know he took them to the tournament. I think they were in the eight nine game a couple of years back against Butler, uh, and then obviously Chris came in and and really raised raised the level, raised the you know student body awareness the fan base awareness, uh, the environment in, in Lubbock totally changed and the expectations in Lubbock totally changed. Uh, and it became, you know, one of the toughest places to play in college basketball and one of the toughest places to play in the Big 12. You know, well, what's unfortunate as a coach, when you leave a school, especially after you've had great success, you do want to be, I don't know if the word's revered, but you do want to be welcome back. And I know there's a lot of hard feelings, but – he did a lot of good for that program as well. I mean, you talk about Elite Eight, you talk about Final Four. You know, Mark Adams came with him from Little Rock, and Mark's going to do a phenomenal job there in Lubbock. He's an elite coach. He's won his whole life. And so I think both both places have the situations they want. Texas wanted Chris Beard. You know, Chris wanted to be the head coach of Texas, and Mark Adams is a West Texas guy, you know, loves Texas Tech, and he's going to be there, you know, for a long time. And, uh, Tomorrow night's really, to me, about substance over hype. There's a lot of hype to this game. Both coaches, I think, the way they run their program, there's a lot of substance there because they're defensive-minded, they're toughness, they're fundamentally sound. The substance is going to win out. Like we talked off air, you just hope it doesn't get crazy to where something yes. you know, takes away from the game. Let those guys compete. They're going to give Coach Beer holy heck, but do it you know, to where we can still have a great, great college basketball environment because that's what, you know, that's what college basketball is about is the environment. Yeah, I, I just hope that it stays something that we can celebrate, right? If it's crazy and it's loud and they're screaming at Chris Beard, even if they're cussing at him, I don't really care. Hold up the, hold up your middle finger. Make signs with uh, with with words that would get your mouth washed out with soap if you were back at back in the house. I, I, don't, I don't care about any of that. Don't throw stuff on the court. Don't go after the players. If you win and yep. storm the floor, stay away from the team. Go celebrate with your team. You don't have to go at the other team. You don't have to go to Chris Beard. Flip them off. I don't think he really cares. Well, he probably does care a little bit about it, T.O., but um, I, I, I just hope that you don't go across that line where it becomes, okay, yep. this is a problem. He's the same guy you revered in March, you know, and then at the end of March, now everything's changed. And so, uh, but – that's that's fans, you know, fans, you know, fanatics, you know, they love their school. And obviously and look, there's a rival. I, I kind of I, I, I understand. I think it's I think it's bit. more I think it's more than just Chris Beard left. It's where he left for. 
Yeah, that's yes. what I mean. I know there's a Texas, yeah. Texas Tech. I was getting to that the rivalry piece. That, yeah, that's what b- bother. If it goes to Arizona, they're probably yeah. Okay. They probably don't think they probably don't no. think much about it. The, the last guy that spoke in that segment is the guy who stuck out mm-hmm. to me. He goes, "Y'all think y'all think you just got all this money in Austin, Texas, and and all that stuff." And and people have called Texas Tech the little brother. I think they're like the the, the four wheeling cousin that shows up with like a Jeep and really big wheels. Like that's or a truck with really big wheels on it. That's Texas Tech. I don't want to belittle them by calling them little brother. This is a rugged fan base. This is a lot of what this is a passionate fan base. They're just a little have a little bit more edge than Texas fans. Like I've said this before, so it's not like I'm just coming out of nowhere and saying this. I I feel like a lot of people, a lot of Texas fans, a lot of Texas boosters feel like you could just throw one hundred million dollars at something and just fix it. And that's not how this stuff works. At Texas Tech, you're not going to get as much money. You're still going to get a lot of money. Like, you're still going to get a lot of money, obviously. That practice facility is nice now. Yeah, exactly (laughs) right. Like, you're still going to get a lot of money, but you're not going to get Texas money. I think that's fair to say. No question. Yeah. But I I, I do want to talk a little bit about what Beard was able to do at Texas Tech, because I think that he he deserves credit for building that program into what it was. Now, look, Steve, you coached against Tubby when he was at Texas Tech. they were, they were winning games when Tubby Smith was there. That's part of the reason why he was able to get the Memphis job uh, when he left. But it wasn't the same thing as it was when, when Chris really got it rolling. Like, it's, the, it's just the environment was different going into that yeah. building. Yeah, the environment was totally different. I mean, Tubby had good teams. Uh, I played Tubby our first year uh, at, I, at Iowa State. And I'm trying to th- – yeah, my first year. And then our second year was, uh, was Beard had gotten there. But – the environment just wasn't crazy. Now, when you go to Texas Tech now, the fans are right on top of you. The student section's there early. You know, they're yelling, screaming. They're into it, and they expect to win, and it's really, really loud. It's 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 top three right now. I know we were talking about this off air, and I may be hitting this a little bit early. It's top three environment in the Big 12. It's top so three. I'd, rank I'd put it rank at em. three. Rank them right now. Put you on oh, the spot. Okay. Let's do it. Kansas 1A, uh, Iowa State 1B, and then three is uh, is Texas Tech. Now, Oklahoma State, and I never played in Oklahoma State when they said back in the day uh, before they raised the, the, the ceiling there, raised the roof there, they say that was probably top three. But there's no question. Right now, I think those are the toughest, three toughest places, <laughs> best environments uh, in the Big 12. K-State's good, can be good. West Virginia can be, you know, really good. But night in, night out right now, you know, when Hilton is – Hilton's special now. Kansas is Kansas, and Texas Tech has become phenomenal. Mm-hmm. So, I, I – it, it really has. And I think that part of what makes it – part of what makes it so crazy there and part of the reason why um, Mark Adams has been so successful there is that there is no, like, basketball or there is no football school to kind of – uh, follow the way they want to be able to follow. You need something good to kind of get these fans inspired. I think that's why we're seeing Auburn fans flock to uh, the program that Bruce Pearl has built there, right? It's part of why when Clemson basketball gets really good and maybe Clemson football is in a down year, that's why you see the Clemson fans go nuts, right? That's, a, that's how it was when I played. Like whenever Bowden, it was his last year and then Dabo took the job and there was like this little spell where Clemson football wasn't great and then we were good. I mean, we weren't great, but we were, you know, top 20 in the country for two years that I was there. Like, that's when all the energy can happen to kind of allude to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And it does get crazy in that building. I'll tell you this much. I know I I knew it was going to get insane because I was told uh, by a source close to that Texas Tech program that they had to, one, hire 30 police officers to be able to provide (laughs) security for beard in that building, and two – during the offseason, knowing that this game was going to happen, they had to find a different way for Chris Beard to exit the court so that he doesn't have to. Normally, Steve, right, the, the, vis, the visiting coach has to walk by the student section to leave. They had yeah. to find a way for him to get out on the other side of the floor and still get back to the locker room because they were worried about him walking through the student section. Yeah, you've got to walk. When you leave your bench, you're walking in front of the student section to get back to your tunnel to get to your locker room. And so they, they probably had to go back around or send him the other way um, to get over there uh, from that standpoint. But, you know, the one thing I think that gets, and this may be off the subject of the game, but, you know, everybody talks Chris Beard, Mark Adams. 
and now they're leading two really good programs and both phenomenal coaches. Sometimes it can just be, hey, they were great for each other, and let's leave it at that. You know what I mean? I think they both helped each other phenomenal, you know, a, 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 an astronomical amount. They both were really good for each other. They had some phenomenal moments together from we played them in the tournament to go to the Sweet 16 when they were at Little Rock. Uh, my first year at Iowa State, they had a great team, won 30 plus games. And then they went to an Elite Eight and Final Four together. And and now, I mean, tomorrow night, yeah, everybody's going to watch. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, shoot, Ric Flair's going to be there. I mean, we show yeah, up and, on Ric Flair. Woo! Yep. And, and for the people, the people that are just joining now, uh, Baylor just knocked off West Virginia. Um, so we are the field of 68 after dark. My name is Rob Dosser. I have with me Clemson sharpshooter Terrence Oglesby and former Iowa State head man Steve Prohm. We're talking a little bit about Chris Beard and Mark Adams and that Texas, Texas Tech showdown that we are going to get tomorrow night at nine o'clock. Um, I, I, I'll tell you guys this. Uh, I, I, I think that part of why Texas Tech fans are so bent out of shape is because Chris Beard wanted Mark Adams to come with him to Texas. He tried hard to get him to be one of the assistant coaches on his staff. And Mark Adams kind of shot a shot, right? Like there was no guarantee that he was going to get that Texas Tech job. And what he said was, I'm going to try. This is basically the one chance that he has to be a Big 12 head coach. He's 64, 65 years old. And he said, I'm just going to roll the dice. If it means I don't end up on your staff next year and I don't have a job, then it means I don't end up on your staff and I don't have a job. But he, he went for it, and part of the reason he got it is because uh, the players, some of the – Terrence Shannon, Kevin McCullough, some of those guys were like, we want to play for Mark Adams. Um, I know Jeff Goodman uh, was not the biggest fan of the hire. Um, how is he going to get players? How is he going to be able to I – mean, you guys know how, how, how Jeff is with some of this yeah. stuff. But um, Mark Adams can, can coach his ass off. And he built a roster of dudes that just fit what Texas Tech – uh, they fit Lubbock. They fit the the blue collar blue collar ethos of that school of that city. Um, they kind of fit into what the program was when Beard first really got it going. A bunch of guys that are going to go out there and win the fight, and then worry about winning the basketball game after that. They have 19 guys that are six foot six and switchable and strong and look like they probably should be playing tight end on the football team. They switch everything. They play that no middle defense. Steve, let me ask you this. We got about a minute before we have to get to break here, but how, how difficult is it to go up against that no middle defense? That's not something that a lot of people do, right? No. I, and I think the big 12 is a lot of people have started doing that. You know, Baylor does it now. Um, you know, Iowa state started that this year, you know, uh, but and then Texas obviously does it, you know, with, with, with beer, but it's very difficult to go against, especially in a small amount of prep time. I think the biggest thing in that standpoint, if you're going to do a lot of ball screens, you got to play in the middle third of the floor. Uh, there's a couple actions that you can run. What, what Mark does such a good job is you have your couple ATOs, your couple things that you prep that, Hey, we can, we can hurt them for their early help on the baseline. They do a great job of adjusting. So then your guys need to make the next read, but it's very, very difficult. Uh, you got to be fundamentally sound going in there uh, and playing them because of the way they draw charges, uh, because of their activity on the ball, because of their switching, the ball can't die. And you're going to get shots on the backside. And you got to be shot ready and you got to knock them down. And, you know, hopefully, you know, if Texas is going to go in there, you know, when they, when they penetrate and they move that ball around that backside, Andrew Jones, Courtney Ramey, they got to make threes over there in that backside corner. All right, I need you guys to both give me a pick right now. Putting you on the spot. Texas is playing at Texas Tech. It's 9 o'clock tip tomorrow in Lubbock. T.O., who's winning the game? You got to tell me right now. I don't know the spread, but I'm going Texas Tech even with it. The the spread is not officially out yet. Last that I checked, I will look up right now. Uh, Prome, who you got? Yeah, I've been going back and forth. But, but, you know, as a coach, you start thinking about, hey, there's at some point you got to go on the road and win a big-time game you know, where nobody thinks you can win it and make a statement, um, you know, so I'm going to take Texas tomorrow night, go in there and play really, really well, uh, fight off the emotions. They got to fight. They got to fight the fight early, but I'm going to take Texas to go in there and win. Wow. <laughs> You're going with Texas. I, so you, you said you've been going back and forth. I've been going back and forth on whether or not I think Texas Tech is going to win by 15 or 25. I just think that that environment, you're, you're walking 
Hornet's Nest is uh, is probably too kind for what you're walking in there. It's going to be the seventh level of hell for the Texas players when you walk into that building. And I just think it's going to be too much. I think Texas Tech, that is a team that thrives on energy. And there's going to be more energy in that building than I think any other building outside of maybe Coach K's last game. At, there, at there, there's Indoor no question. I tell you what, the referees are going to have to be on it because that <laughs> game is going to be yeah. physical. They're going to have to be 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 sharp tomorrow night. Those three guys. Are going to, I don't know who the crew is, but they're going to have to be sharp. But the one thing, because of all the emotion, and I and I saw a clip from Marcos Santos Silva. He did a phenomenal job in the press conference the other day after they beat Mississippi State when they were asking about this game. Hey, it's the next game. I love Coach Beard. I appreciate what he did for me. But it's, this is a conference race, too. And for the coaches, yes. it's a conference game. It's a huge game, okay? It's not Beard Adams, what those guys are thinking. It's we got to win this conference game. We're trying to well, play for a conference championship. I, I think there's more to it than just them thinking that, okay, we got to play for the, that. That sure, that, I'm, I'm sure that's in their thoughts, but I guarantee that's going to be more. If it's yeah, just yeah. Mark Adams, it, you know what? He it, might actually be the kind of guy that's wired to only say, yeah, it's just, it's just a regular game. I, no, I not even realize yeah. anything else is going but on. I think it can impact Texas kids just as much because the thing's going to be so wild and there's going to be a lot of pressure on those players as well. Now. I mean, T.O. knows that. I mean, it's it's more pressure sometimes playing at home in big games than it is on the road. On the road, you should be loose, man. Let it let it let it fly, man. And take it media timeout to media timeout. Weather the storms. Texas has to do a great job when they've struggled, like going to Iowa State. When they struggle, they turn the ball over a ton. They got to take care of the ball. The thing against Texas Tech, Texas Bay, those no middle defenses. You got to get a good shot every time down the floor. All right, you can't let poor offense turn in to good offense for them, and then you got to take care of the ball. And that's that's the biggest thing. It's going to be a great game. You know, Lubbock's a fun place to play, and the only one that got to go was Goodman, and he's there for like three days. Yeah, but we just leave him down there. He could he could stay in Lubbock. <laughs> I'm surprised they're being so nice to him. He's in people's tents. Yeah, I know. He, I, did I was... did they know he said Mark Adams? I mean, Mark Adams has won his whole life, and he doesn't think he can get it done. <laughs> I'm like, holy smokes. I saw that one day. I was like, man, I'm going to wait till I get in here and, and bust his balls about that. Yeah, Goodman Goodman doesn't – he wouldn't know good coaching from his left shoe. So uh, I'll leave it at that. All right, anyway, you mentioned that we're in the middle of a Big 12 conference race. When we come back coming up next, we're going to be breaking down that Big 12 conference race. And I'm going to tell you why Baylor doesn't really have all that much to worry about. Big picture. <laughs> 